Welcome back to our uh, weekly reflection on the Gospel of the following Sunday. Uh, today we're reflecting on the 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and I invite you now to listen to the, to the reading. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Just a reminder that um, these sections we've been reading from the Gospel of Luke are part of that journey to Jerusalem. Uh, a, a journey in which he, Jesus spends time particularly focusing on his disciples. And I think what we've got here is something that Jesus um, is saying um, to his disciples. One of the things we find in Luke is a, a, a contrast in peoples, like he has the, the Pharisee and the publican, the prodigal and the elder brother, Martha and Mary, um, the, the, the son that wouldn't go into the field, um, the other one that did. So this is sort of a contrast, and that's what we've got here. And the contrast is not between um, the judge and the woman, it's a contrast between the judge and the Son of Man. In other words, that uh, this is about justice, and what, what, what's happening is that um, um, they are being asked to call, to pray to God uh, for justice. And I think we can understand that if we realise that this section is just the end of the of previous verses. So often in the Gospels we only get a section. And the previous section is about, um, well it's the eschatological discourse, that's a talk about the last times. So it talks about the fact that there's the now and there's the future. And what I think we've got here is um, Jesus saying, well here's what you're supposed to do in the meantime, mm -hmm. and what you are supposed to do um, is to pray um, constantly and unfailingly. We can go back to the parable of the sower that people did fall away, mm -hmm. so that we are to pray constantly and to pray unfailing. And the night and day refers to that. What came to mind as we were doing this was Anna in the temple, the widow who prayed night and day, and then the Son of Man came in the presence of um, Jesus. So what we have here, I think, is um, um, Jesus asking his disciples to have confidence that there will be um, a vindication, there will be a sorting out, as it were. But in the meantime, what they need to do is to pray. Luke um, emphasises prayer more than the other Gospel. Jesus prays more in Luke. And the other main teaching on prayer that Luke offers is in chapter 11, where he gives the Lord's Prayer. And then he gives an example. And it's the example of that man that has a guest and he goes to his friend at midnight and asks for some bread. Mm -hmm. And the fellow didn't want to come out. But eventually, because he persisted, he did come out. Yeah. And then after that, the very next words are, um, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall, shall be open to you. And then, that if this is the way we act, um, God's not going to act that way. Mm -hmm. And in that text there, it says that God will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him. So I think the message there is, one, it's prayer. It's, it's about prayer. Yeah. It's about prayer in the interim time, as it were. It's a prayer that shows that we're not, um, not giving up, as it were. Mm -hmm. And I think it's... Um, very relevant to our times. Mm. I think that sort of prayer in the situation we're in um, is important. Yeah.
You know, I'm, the prayer one that I struggle, um, you know, because we've always had that, that sense of, of the need to pray for situations, for people mm. and so on, and yet the realisation of what we're praying for never works out. Mm. So is there something in there that that kind of um, uh, changes the way in which we come to prayer and for what we pray? And, and like thinking of the woman there who was crying out, she, or, or the, um, the sense there in, in, you know, was, was for justice, a case of justice, and God never seems to kind of tire of responding to justice, not so much for our comforts, but where there's an issue of justice at stake, uh, God seems to enter into the, into the situation. But nonetheless, it's still comforting, or, or no, it's not always comforting, but to hear those words, you know, um, stay the course, keep on praying, yes. um, don't lose faith, don't lose heart. Um, I feel as though I <clears throat> beg your pardon, can't really add to the insight into that particular piece of the gospel. However, I'm really struck by the reality of our times living mm. in 2022 yeah. and speaking personally, the impact of technology on my life I think has impacted my prayer life. And what I notice is when I'm away from that, the devices, I'm more likely to pray. And I know it sounds strange, but I like to pray when I'm in the garden. Because, you know, whether I'm digging or weeding or clipping or cutting, and often it's a prayer, it will often be for people in my life or my children and handing them over to God and praying in that way. Mm. But I have noticed that it gets harder the more I'm attached to devices mm. because they seem to occupy your reflection space. Mm. So um, it's a reminder, it's great to play, pray yes. always, but also a reminder to me, what do you do in Virginia when it's raining because you're not in the garden so you're going to have to find mm. another place. But it seems that you need some quiet space mm. to actually pray. Mm. Pope Francis spoke about that recently too, didn't he? Did he? Did this obsession, it becomes an obsession, yeah. uh, modern technology. It has its advantages, but it can also be an obsession. Yeah. Yes. And, and like, there's so much on there, even the, like the prayer of the church is on there, the mass is on there, yeah. you can get anything. And yet, I think I that's what you're saying, but you're, once you, even when you start to do that, Oh, you, you go to so many other job, things because it's like a it's like a whirlwind. Yeah. You go in there and all these colours and movements, and yeah. you forget why. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, I've heard that applied to to the clergy. One of the issues I think is clergy spending too much time on the internet and things yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. However, we invite you now just to look at the text yourself and just to draw from it something that you you feel uh, is relevant to you, not just to imitate what we've done or said that you are to encounter the Lord in your own way. So just spend a moment now drawing out the message that you think the scriptures say to you today. We invite you now to listen to the, uh, the reading for a second time. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice that so she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Well, the thing that, that came through to me when I was reading was the, the question of hope. Really, that what's being said there is that we, that, that prayer is asking that in the long run what is promised will come. And so I felt that the, um, 
the uh, virtue of hope came through to me, so I thought I might just reflect on that virtue, and uh, in the light of the fact that it involves mm. trust in God and mm. trust that justice will be done, that those who believe in the Lord will be vindicated. And I think for me the reminder to pray always and not to lose heart. Mm. Uh, it's just a good jolt. Mm. Keep, keep at it, not to lose heart. Mm. Yeah, uh, I'm just reminded of um, Edward Hayes, the spiritual writer who died some years ago. Uh, one of his books was called Pray Always, A-L-W-A-Y-S, mm. and to pray in A-L-L-W-A-Y-S. And I think that's a challenge for me, to pray always, yes, as we're being asked, but in all ways. In all ways, yeah, and to be open to what I'm praying for, that that my prayer does flow over into life in some way. Pray always has been something that comes from St Paul, and that's always been taken up as central. But it was interesting that, that the commentators were suggesting that really pray always means pray constantly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in other words, keep a regular yeah. form of yeah. prayer in your life. And I often say to people, uh, it's not a question of what you do, but the fact that you keep doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that's uh, what's been said yeah. as well. Mm. Okay. We invite you now to draw something from the text that you could apply to your life. Remember that the Lexio is a process of beginning in the scriptures and ending in your life. Spend a moment now to see what you can draw out that you can apply now to your life. Let's now just spend a moment in prayer. Um, we are working in the realm of, of the spiritual and the divine. So let us ask the Lord for the grace and courage that we need to apply what we've chosen to our life. Thank you for being with us. Uh, we hope that um, our reflection together has been helpful to you and we are grateful that you give time to share with us this time of reflecting on the gospel where we really have that common faith and it brings us together. We conclude now as we always do with the reading from next Sunday's Mass. Almighty ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen.